Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey, and today we are going to discuss HCG cruising, or cruising with HCG. So in this case, I'm going to explain HCG cruising as kind of a bridging technique. Essentially, what people do is they finish the cycle, and between the end of the cycle and the start of the new one, they run HCG. The logic behind this is that HCG stimulates the testicles and helps with testosterone production, and therefore not, not only helps recover fertility post-cycle, but also theoretically would maintain gains because your testosterone doesn't take a massive dip. It is also postulated to help with strength between cycles. The issue with HCG cruising is a lot of it is based on speculation. There aren't too many studies on HCG cruising, what essentially we would need is someone taking steroids and then right after taking steroids they start HCG and we look at whether or not this helps maintain natural testosterone production and or muscle mass and or strength. Fortunately there aren't many studies like this, however we do have access to a new study which looked at this phenomenon. The issue with this study is that the sample size is very small and not many of the participants fit the criteria we're looking at. So I'll show you on the screen what the name of the study is. It's the safety of HCG monotherapy among men with previous exogenous testosterone use. So essentially the participants were started on HCG within a year of stopping testosterone. The issue with that time frame is it's not really what we're looking at. What we're looking at is someone who starts steroids, goes to HCG and we want to see the effects, whether or not they lose strength, etc. Unfortunately, there are no studies like that. However, this study looks at serum testosterone levels. So in that case, we'd be curious to see whether or not testosterone levels are maintained, or at least the participant doesn't go hypogonadal after stopping the testosterone and starting the HCG. Eight participants in this study of 28 people, yes, it's a tiny study, started HCG immediately after testosterone. So let's take a closer look at whether or not the supplementation of HCG had an impact. Again, there are many limitations with the study. The sample size is small. It's a retrospective analysis. The timing of the serum collection of testosterone results was a bit varied, and the dosing strategies varied amongst participants, which makes it a bit difficult to come to any guideline on HCG cruising dose. So essentially, these participants were on testosterone before, different participants used different preparations, then they stopped, 8 were put on HCG immediately, and the other 20 were put on after quite a while. A lot of people injected HCG twice weekly, some three times weekly. And the dosages varied between 1000 to 2000, with 1500 being the most commonly used dose. But again, this is an issue because this variable isn't kept constant. So let's look at the results from this study. So essentially, if we look at this graph, sorry for the poor quality, but it essentially it shows that before HCG or whilst on testosterone, the serum levels of these participants was 467, and after stopping testosterone and a year later, sorry I forgot to mention that these participants were on HCG for a year, and a year later their testosterone result had a non-significant drop. If we look at the participants who were off testosterone prior to the initiation of HCG, we can see that they gained a significant increase in total testosterone, but overall when these groups were combined, it suggests that HCG maintained testosterone levels. And then there were other graphs looked at, and what they noted is that hematocrit seemed to decrease with the HCG group as well as there was a decrease in PSA or prostate-specific antigen. However, what is important from this data is the decrease in hematocrit was not significant in the 
individuals who went straight from TRT to HCG, and they didn't have much of a change in their PSA levels. This has been supported by a lot of data, suggesting that HCG might not be as safe for your hematocrit levels as previously thought. Again, another limitation I forgot to add was the fact that these men were on exogenous testosterone for a reason, which means HCG might not have it as a great effect because these individuals already have testicular damage of some sort, but this wasn't all participants and that wasn't really made clear in this study. But overall, what we can conclude from this study when looking at the testosterone results, since that's the only thing we that met our criteria, is that the testosterone did not drop. However, if we look at the individuals who had been off testosterone for a year, their testosterone levels seem to be similar to that of the individuals who were started on HCG immediately, although this group did have a significant increase in testosterone levels. The issue is that whilst these testosterone levels were maintained, however, an issue is also that whilst these testosterone levels were maintained pre and post HCG in those who went straight from testosterone to HCG, the levels at which HCG maintained their testosterone levels whilst considered therapeutic or physiological, we're still in the low range. And this makes me pose the question as to whether this result has a significant impact on more important outcomes like keep maintaining your muscle mass, sexual libido, strength, because all we know is that HCG will maintain your testosterone level in a low normal region. And even in the participants who were off for a year, their total testosterone was 300 and those on HCG for a year, their total testosterone was 392. And whether that makes a significant impact on the outcomes you're looking for when starting HCG might put HCG cruising into question. So whilst it may look like these results suggest that HCG reduces your hematocrit, and those going straight from testosterone to HCG, there didn't seem to be a change in hematocrit. However, it'd be interesting to look at individuals on testosterone therapy who have an increased hematocrit and see whether or not HCG will decrease that hematocrit. However, as I said previously, HCG seems to increase your hematocrit levels. We don't know to what extent it does, and whether or not it's as great as testosterone's effect. So overall, the idea of HCG cruising or bridging to me sounded very interesting, and sounded like a possibility for a lot of steroid users, as between cycles you could go on HCG, maintain your testosterone strength and whatnot, whilst benefit from not actually being on exogenous testosterone and perhaps have improved biomarkers of health. What we can conclude from this very limited study is that, which is kind of the only thing we have in this point in time, is that HCG cruising might not have any benefit whatsoever. And whether or not maintaining your testosterone levels in a low normal versus slightly low range has much of a difference on the other outcomes we want to look at. So it's an interesting concept, however so far science doesn't really suggest it does much at all. Whilst the authors of this paper seem to conclude otherwise, when looking at it from the aspect we want to, it doesn't seem that HCG cruising has much of an effect at all and could possibly be pointless. And again, a lot of the HCG that most individuals have access to is inaccurately dosed or just not HCG because it wasn't stored correctly. So let me know what you think about this video in the comments, what you think about HCG cruising, whether you've done it, whether you've experienced benefits from it or haven't, and I'll see you in the next video.